Sangha da Aral Senhor Lahat. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Sapangala ni Cristo Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are live here to one more time present to you the Open Bible Program. And I praise and bless those who are faithful to God, those who support the church because they allow us to be here and to be sharing with all of you the Word of Life, the Word of God. And I believe whatever they are, they shall be blessed. Not only here in the Philippines, we have many supporters also from outside the Philippines. Let them be blessed in Jesus' name. So, again, let's have the continuation of the message we started last Monday. Turn your Bible to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, please. And while you do so, let me pray. Yes, Father, allow us to understand the spirits that you are passing on to us through the story of your servant and good friend whose name was Abraham. Allow us to not only understand but also to imitate, to take the same way he took, which I believe, Lord, will lead us to the way that Jesus pointed to us. He said, I am the way. So help us, my Father, one more time, sending your Holy Spirit to all of us. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, uh, let's go through verses 2 and 3. But let me read from the beginning. Now, the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Okay. Uh, as far as I can remember, I spoke to you that Sarai was bearing a bearing woman, which means she could not bear any child for Abraham. And Abraham, of course, was nearly hopeless about that. He kept his faithfulness towards Sarai, not contracting a second marriage, but somehow he was upset or frustrated about this matter. And now God promises to him. First of all, God says, okay, you leave everything, you believe in me, and I'll guide you. In the future, I'll show you your destination. And now, this is a commandment followed by promises. And God, in the first promise, he says, I will make you a great nation. How could a man whose wife was barren become a great nation? Then, although God was not specific, but he used his intelligence, God was pushing him to associate to his pananampalataya, his faith, intelligence. So he thought, if God is promising to me that I shall become a great nation, it means that my wife will be healed. 
by this God. He will heal my wife. Because how can I become a great nation without having children? Hmm? So God pushed him to, to link to his faith intelligence. And that's what God has revealed to the UCKG. We have to have faith, but link it to our intelligence. We call it intelligent faith. And he understood the promise of God. And then God continues. I will bless you and make your name great. Actually, God changed the name of Abram to Abraham. Abraham means the father of many. The father of many. And yeah, that man who was supposed to be one more human being who lived in the planet, nobody was supposed to knew about him, not in the future. But God said, look to him, look to Abraham. And Abraham became the most important human being who ever lived in this planet. Yeah, of course, I'm not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a human being, but he was born of, out of the infusion of the Holy Spirit in Mary. He had a mother, but not a human father, but a heavenly father. But a person uh, who had a human father and mother, nobody was as great as Abraham. Why? Because, yeah, he became a friend of God. Adam lost that friendship with God. So after Adam, the first human being that God referred to, calling him friend, was Abraham. And of course, his name is great. Why? Some people, uh, they have made some research about uh, how many descendants of Abraham we may have in the world right now. And they came out with such a huge number of human beings. They say that it's more than half of the whole population in the planet carry within their veins the blood, the DNA of Abraham. Aside from the spiritual DNA, we Christians, we carry the spiritual DNA of Abraham. So, yeah, the true promises came true. Israel is a great nation. And now the multitude of people that came from him made him the greatest man who ever lived in this planet. And then in the third verse, it says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Wow. Listen, it is, it is uh, the summary of God's protection. How can I explain the way God protects those who belong to him? This way. Those who are protected by God, when they are blessed by others, as they are blessed the blessings cast upon them by others return to the blessers and the blessers become even more blessed than before. But the cursors who curse those who are protected by God, they become even more cursed. <laughs> That's the protection of God. That's how God takes care of his people. If you belong to him, it is 
it is applied to your life. Those who bless you, they will be blessed. And those who curse you, they will be cursed. So you don't need to worry. It's worry-free kind of condition. If you have God's protection, <laughs> listen to me. 1,000 may fall at your side. 10,000 at your right side. But you will never, never have the evil reaching you. Never, never. Because God is your protector. And this is great, isn't it? Isn't it? But you have to conquer God's protection by belonging 100% to God. Being a purchase of God. Okay? And then it says, in you, in you and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this is the last point I, I want to explore. Yeah, Abraham was so blessed that he was chosen by God to generate Israel, the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, and from this nation, the Messiah, the Son of God, was born, the Savior of all. Of course, the Savior of all who choose to be saved by Him. And this is marvelous. That's why all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Because Jesus Christ was a descendant, physically speaking, and spiritually speaking, from Abraham. He inherited that faith, that intelligent faith, that obedience to God. Because we're going to learn by Friday now about his obedience. Up to now, we, we are talking about the proposal of God. And after we go through verse 4, we will see whether Abraham obeyed God or not. But listen. Uh, also, aside from generating Jesus, the Savior of the world, he also gave one of the greatest examples to families. He was a man who would give value to family. As I spoke last Monday, he had the freedom to acquire a second wife, but he didn't. Why? Because he truly loved Sarai, who became Sarah. He truly loved his wife and was committed to her, to the point that, okay, if she cannot bear any child for me, it, 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 it's going to frustrate me, but I will not despise, ignore my wife, the woman I loved so much to the point that I, I gave my life to her and she gave her life to me and we became one. And we have another example. Uh, when we talk about Anna, huh? he blessed all the families of the earth. But Anna could not say the same thing because her story was quite different. Her husband, Elkanah, when he realized, although he loved her, okay, not with the same intensity of Abraham loving uh, Sarah, but he loved her, he told her, I love you, you are important for me, more important than my second wife. He contracted a second marriage because maybe the family put some pressure or the pressure was inside of him and he married a second woman who was capable to give him children. And he created much pain 
to his wife. Who? Praise God. Was a woman of God, came to God, and God resolved the problem. But we have two different situations. Two different examples. Follow the example given by Abraham. Love your spouse. Be faithful to your spouse, no matter what. Consider your spouse as yourself. Your very self. Yes. Because the two become one. And now, once they are mixed, cannot be separated. Not anymore. Okay? So, I hope the Holy Spirit blessed you. And he has enlightened you. And you have become stronger in your faith by the knowledge of the Word of God. Okay? Uh, let me pray for you before we finish our open Bible program. Yes, Holy Spirit, I give thanks to you. I know that somehow when we learn about Abraham's facts, we are growing because nearly every step he took became a lesson to all of us. So I hope, Lord, you may have strengthened these people's faith, these people's hope, these people's love for their spouses and family members. And I hope, above all, that they may, may have believed that the intelligent faith linked to the Lord Jesus Christ can truly save them. That's what I pray about in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, uh, today is Wednesday, 7.30 in the evening. I'll be here together with all the men of God, the women, the women of God. We all shall be here to finish the Bible study about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the last three virtues of the Holy Spirit will be passed on to you tonight. And next Wednesday, we're going to start a new series of Bible studies. Okay? I will announce to you later as you come and join us. You can come here or you can uh, visit our website and uh, you will get to know where the UCKG is located here in the Philippines, okay? This is one of our church to participate in the Bible study. It's free of charge. You will receive the study also free of charge, and the Lord shall bless you abundantly. And tomorrow we are going to have the marriage of all marriage. So a great celebration, marriage celebration in the church, and I will be uh, delivering a message myself and Claudia before Pastor Christian will celebrate and, and bless all the couples that will officially get married in the church tomorrow, okay? Here in Cuba. God bless you abundantly. Thank you for watching us. Share the link so that more people may also be blessed with the revelation of Genesis chapter 12. God bless you. The Universal Church is also online. Connect with us on our social media accounts. Be updated on our Facebook page. Watch us on YouTube. Check us on Instagram. If you want to know more, visit our website. All of this just to reach you. You are welcome to the Physical and Online Universal Church.